Today I'm going to go over AP Precalculus topic 3.9, which is about inverse trig functions. Uh, so remember for inverses, the inputs and the outputs are switched. For trig functions, our inputs and outputs are very specific. Uh, the inputs of trig functions are angles. We take the sine of pi over 2, the cosine of 3 pi over 4. Uh, so the inputs are angles, so for the inverse trig functions, the outputs are going to be angles. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about the notation. Um, their inverses, so the x and y, or in this case theta and y, are going to switch positions. Um, there's two notations. So y equals sine of theta means theta is equal to the sine inverse of y. This is also called arc sine y. Okay, this notation came around with calculators. Um, it's not real great notation because if I have x to the negative 1, that's equivalent to 1 over x, but this does not mean 1 over sine. Uh, but we understand this to be the inverse of sine. Cosine is cosine inverse theta. Oops, switch. Okay, and then again it has the arc sine definition. So theta is equal to the arc cosine of y. And repeat this with tangent. Theta equals tangent inverse of y, or theta is arc tan y. You'll see those notations pretty interchangeably, either with the negative one symbol or the whole word written out. Um, you can use either if asked, uh, but you need to understand that those are exactly the same thing, just different presentations. Okay, so we're going to be finding some inverses. Uh, now it's important to note that I'm going to find the inverse, and there's some domain and range restrictions that I'm not going to deal with right now. We're going to deal with that shortly, uh, but just keep that, there's that piece. Um, but I can switch x and y. and we're gonna solve for our y value. So I'm gonna add four. Okay, I can divide by two. I'm gonna go ahead and just multiply by one half. Okay, now if the sine of three y is all of this, then the sine inverse or arc sine of this is going to be 3y. So I'm going to divide by 3 and go ahead and express my answer as 1 third sine inverse 1 half x plus 4. Let's repeat that over here. So I'm going to divide by 2. Okay, once I have that cosine isolated, if the cosine of this is this, then the arc cosine or the cosine inverse of this equals the inside piece. I'll multiply by 2. And then we'll add two. So my inverse is going to be two cosine inverse x over two plus two. Again, there's there's more pieces to this, but that would be our equation. All right. So I have our graph of sine, and we immediately know that when I reflect it over the line y equals x, I am not going to have an inverse function. Okay. We have our not so scientific horizontal line test that this fails, um, but sine is not one to one. For every input, there's one output. For, for every output, there's an infinite number of inputs. Um, so when we flip it over and get the inverse, this is not a function. But if you say sine inverse of pi over three in your calculator, it's gonna give you sine. Uh, sine inverse of one half, it's gonna give you an answer. So where are we getting that answer? Okay. 
uh, we have to put a restriction on our range. Okay, and the restriction that somebody somewhere decided is going to be the restriction from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Because if I take away all the rest of that, I now have a function that passes a vertical line test. So this graph starts at negative 1 pi over 2. Okay, and then it's going to go up like this. So the graph of arc sine is just this little segment. Okay, the domain of that is from negative 1 to 1. The important part, because this is something that is just defined, the range is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. These are all inclusive. Okay, and I guess my inputs can also be thetas, but uh, we'll think x and y for this. So that is arc sine. Let's take a look at arc cosine. Okay, so here's my graph of cosine. Same issue. Doesn't pass a, a horizontal line test. It is not one to one. Um, so when we flip it over, we have something that is absolutely not a function. Uh, but if we restrict the domain, we can, or the range, uh, then we're in good shape. This one, I can't go from negative pi over two to pi over two. That's not gonna get it done. But if I go from zero to pi, Everything between negative 1 and 1 has one and exactly one output, angle output, uh, that corresponds with it. So the graph of arc cosine, our cosine of 1, or 0 is 1, our cosine of negative 1 is pi. Okay, so that's our graph of arc cosine. So similar graph to arc sine. Uh, but it's kind of flipped and uh, cosine goes from 0 to pi, whereas arc cosine goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Uh, so the domain is still negative 1 to 1. The range is restricted to 0 and pi. I'm realizing my notes are bad. These should say, what does it say? Okay, uh, because my inputs are not thetas, we're getting out thetas. So these should technically be x's. So apologies about that. All right, our next graph is of tangent. Tangent uh, is periodic. Um, vertical asymptotes at pi over 2, negative pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and so on. So if I flip this guy around over the line y equals x, we get this. Again, not a function. Uh, for the inverse function, we're going to select this middle guy there. Okay. Uh, so on my graph here, uh, pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, we have vertical asymptotes for tangent. So we're going to have horizontal asymptotes for tangent inverse, which makes this a great graph. So our domain, unlike sine and cosine, is all values. The range is similar to sine in that it goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. However, those are asymptotes, so it's going to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 non-inclusive, because we're not going to get those out, because um, tangent is undefined at pi over 2 and pi over 2, so we're never going to get an output of that. Okay, so I'm going to try to make an equation for these graphs. Now, you could certainly get creative with flips and shifts and all of that, but I'm going to try to find the simplest solution. Um, here, this is just like a cosine inverse. Cosine inverse uh, goes from negative 1 to 1 and then from 0 to pi. It's always decreasing. Um, but this one, instead of going from 0 to pi, it's going from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, so we have a vertical dilation 
by factor 2, which means my equation is going to be 2 times the cosine inverse of x. Okay, this one looks like my sine inverse, but it's going from negative 2 to 2. So this one has a horizontal dilation by a factor of 2. Okay, which means my b is 1 over 2. So this is going to be sine inverse of x over 2, or 1 half x. So what does this mean when we're trying to evaluate sine inverse, cosine inverse, tangent inverse, especially when it comes to our known unit circle values? Uh, so what I'm going to do is kind of make a specialized unit circle so that we can think about it. Um, and then on your AP test, you're not going to have a unit circle, so you just got to be able to visualize all of this stuff. For sine, the inputs are from negative 1 to 1, and those are going to be our y values going from negative 1 up to positive 1. Our outputs are the angles from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Negative pi over 2 is down here, and we're going to go up to positive pi over 2. Okay, so I'm first going to go ahead and label those angles. Okay, this is going to be 0. This is pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. This will be negative pi over 6, negative pi over 4, negative pi over 3, and negative pi over 2. Okay, those are going to be my outputs. My inputs are going to be the corresponding y values. Well, my y values are 1, root 3 over 2, root 2 over 2, 1 half, 0, negative 1 half, negative root 2 over 2, negative root 3 over 2, and negative 1. So looking at this, if I say, what's the sine inverse of negative pi over 4? Or just sorry, never, negative root 2 over 2. That's going to be an answer of negative pi over 4. Our inputs are these y values. My outputs are going to be one of the angles on this half of the unit circle. For cosine, our outputs are going to be the values between 0 and pi. So that's going to be just the top half of the unit circle. And we'll label those angles. Okay, so just our normal unit circle angles, 0 through pi. And here we're looking at our x-coordinates. So my x-coordinates are 0. Sorry, x-coordinate is a 1. 1, root 3 over 2, root 2 over 2, 1 half, 0, and then we're in quadrant 2, so we've got negative 1 half, negative root 2 over 2, negative root 3 over 2, and negative 1. Okay, finally, tangent. Tangent has the same range mostly that sine does. So I'll go ahead and label those angles. Okay, and we developed the tangent values in lesson 3.8. Uh, so tangent is y over x, so my tangent at 0 is 0, and then it goes up to root 3 over 3. Tangent at pi over 4 is just 1, because our slope there is 1. This is bigger than 1 at root 3. And at the top of our circle, our tangent is undefined there. This will be negative root 3 over 3, negative 1, negative root 3, and undefined again. So again, what we're looking at here is if I say, what's the tangent inverse of negative root 3? You're going to say negative pi over 3. That's our one and only one output value in the range for tangent inverse. So now we're going to evaluate these. Uh, so sine is negative root 3 over 2. So we're working backwards from what we're used to. 
But here I'm saying I've got a, the long y value, but negative. Okay, there's my long y short x. Well, that's going to be what we typically say is 5 pi over 3 on our unit circle. But for our function, this is negative pi over 3. And we're always looking on the right half of the circle. For cosine, we're only looking on the top half of the circle, uh, where the x-coordinate is negative 1 which is at pi. Okay, cosine equaling 1 half. Okay, again, only the top half of the circle, but we're looking for our short x, which occurs up here at pi over 3. Okay, arc sine negative 1. So our y value of negative 1 occurs down here for this half of our circle, that is negative pi over 2 arc sine root 3 over 3. That's our smaller one here, down at pi over 6. Tangent of 1. We usually associate the 1s and zeros with the quadrantals, but tangent is the segment that has a slope of 1, which is at pi over 4. Sine pi root 2 over 2 is pi over 4. Cosine of 0, that's going to be our, on the top half, 0, which is at pi over 2. And finally, arctan negative root 3. Okay, tangents, the right side of our graph. We're going to the steeper negative, which will be at negative pi over 3. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps you to understand the inverse trig function.